How many of us are glad to be here tonight? Amen. You might not be after you leave. <laughs> the title of this teaching, <clears throat> Trust in God or Money. That's the title. Trust in God or Money. You know, we have a choice. We're going to see what the scriptures say. We seem to be stressed out in our lives for different reasons. But the biggest reason is money. Most people are stressed out because of money. Finances. There's a lot of stuff that they stress out on. But money is probably the number one. We're going to go to, go to your Bibles. For, to the book of Luke. And go to chapter 16. We're going to start at verse 1. We're going to go all the way to th through 13, but we're going to start at verse 1. And he said also unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And here we have a man. He's like a CPA for this rich man, his boss. His boss finds out that he's been pocketing some of the money. And in verse 2, And he called him, and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Now the boss lets him know that he knows what he's doing, what's going on. And he tells him to get the books in order, because he's going to get fired. And in verse 3, Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg I am ashamed the man saying what am I gonna do now this is what happens whenever we get caught for doing wrong we get caught for doing wrong and then after we get caught it's like oh what am I gonna do now this is an office job he had he doesn't know how to be a laborer he says I can't dig I can't be a laborer I don't know how I've always done the office work and he's too proud to beg for help He's not ashamed to steal people's money, but he's ashamed to ask people for help. That's going to change. Verse 4, I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their house. What he's saying there, he's saying, I know what to do. He says, I know what to do. I'll make the people who owes the boss money. He says, he'll, he'll tell them, Hey, and we're going to see, you pay this much, you owe this much, but only pay this much. He's going to cut them a lot of slack. But the reason he's doing it is because he's going to make them obligated, which we're going to see in the scriptures, to him. He's doing them a favor. And in verse 5, so he called everyone of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? This is the very reason that the Lord doesn't want us to owe anyone. Because then we're obligated to them. Just like here. You're going to see how they're going to be obligated to this steward. Romans 13.8 says, Own, own no man anything. Let me give you an example about what it's like to owe someone. Like in the movies. You borrow money from a gangster. What happens if you don't pay it back? It costs you. Our gangsters nowadays is interest. It kills everyone. It kills people when they borrow money. You pay back three or four times more than what you borrowed. That's why the Lord says, hey, don't owe anybody. Owe anyone. There's a reason. Verse 6, and he said, A hundred measures of oil, which is 800 gallons of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. The steward tells him to cut it in half. If you owe him that much, cut it in half. Pay him this much. Of course, that makes this guy real happy. He owes this much, but the guy said, just pay half of it. And then verse <clears throat> 7, Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat, which is about a thousand bushels of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write fourscore 
which is which is 800 bushels cutting his also from what he owed in verse 8 and the Lord commanded the unjust steward because he had done wisely for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of the light you're like oh, what's that mean the boss knows he's been had because now these guys have a bill of sale they can show hey I've paid you off they're not and just like the steward was dishonest so are these other guys going to be because if the boss wants to take them to court they're not going to say hey he uh, did this or he did that they're going to say hey I have a bill to sell okay so he can't take them to court this is a good description of the world mm -hmm. now these men are going to have to take the steward in because he was up ahead he said he didn't know what to do he wasn't going to have nowhere to go but now these people are obligated to him because for what the favor he did for them. See where I'm going with this? They're obligated to him. Hey, I did this for you. Right. Now you owe me. This, this wicked steward was very sneaky. He made it to where they had to help him. They didn't know that's what he was doing. But he was sneaky. Because of the break he gave them, they were obligated to him. The last part of this verse is saying lost wicked people know how to work together to do wrong. Lost wicked people know how to work together to do wrong. Where the Christians don't. Christians take other Christians to court. Instead of going to the Lord to work things out. Christians take other Christians to court. 1 Corinthians 6 verses 1 and 2. A lot of these verses is going, to, is going to be the living Bible. Some of them are going to be King James. Some are living. Verse 1. There any of you having a matter against another. Talking about Christians here. Go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? I said it already, but I'm going to say it again. The lost wicked world can work together and do wrong, but we as Christians fight each other. These lost people, that steward and the guys he cut slack on, they're lost. But they worked something out together to get away with, with wrong. Christians, we don't do that. We fight amongst each other and we take each other to court. Where the Lord says, don't take a brother or a sister to court. Take it to him. Seek the Lord's will in the matter, and He'll take care of it. We don't do that. I don't see Christians doing that. I see them going to court to a lost judge to settle their matter. This also shows that this steward was planning for the future. He's, he's okay, I'm going to be out of a job. So he made a plan to take care of his future. He was wise enough to look ahead. That's what it says. Christians, listen to me. Jesus is coming soon, and we need to be looking forward to it. We need to be looking ahead. We need to live like He's coming tomorrow. That's what we need to do. Matthews twenty four forty two. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doeth come. He said to watch. We don't just sit back and say, okay, He's going to come one day and just do whatever you want to do. If we're watching, that means we're we're keeping our eyes on them, walking with them. We'd be holy, holy, holy the day before, or a few days before. But we don't do that. It's like, I know he's coming, but, I mean, he's, they've been saying it. He hasn't come yet. So, a lot of Christians just live life the way they feel like living. It says to be watchful. Because if you do that, this is what he's going to have for us if we're watchful. Matthew 5.12 Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so prosecuted they the prophets which were before you. <clears throat> there's going to be rewards. If you're doing God's work, doing His will, there's going to be rewards in heaven. And maybe I, one day I'll teach about that, that there's different levels in heaven, and there's there's going to be rewards given in heaven. Maybe I'll teach on that one day. Maybe.
like I said, I like to teach stuff that's going to help us today in our walk. I mean, that's nice to look forward to, and I tell you that, and I could do a teaching on it, but not right now. Matthew sixteen twenty seven, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Works don't save you. When you're walking with the Lord, you do works. His works. Okay, so don't think works save you because they don't. But when you're walking with the Lord, you'll do what he wants you to do. You want to please him. 1 Corinthians 3.14 If any man's works abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. There's rewards in heaven. How many of us in here want our re to get rewards in heaven? I mean, these blessings we get down here, and they're blessings. Who just think? Just think what the Lord's going to have us in heaven. Heaven's already going to be perfect, but yet we're going to get a rewards on top of that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Revelations eleven verse eighteen, and the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints. Who's the saints? Yes. Us, we, the Christians, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shall destroy them which destroy the earth. Just like this steward looked ahead, so shall we. So, no, I do this because I like it. I witness because I love the Lord. I have Bible study because I love the Lord. All these things I do because I love the Lord. But he... Uh, Reading the scriptures, he's going to say, hey, there's rewards for the way you walked on earth. If you was a silent Christian, and people didn't even know you was a Christian, you think you're going to get any rewards for that? Yeah. So we should be looking ahead also. Just like this wicked man looked ahead, we as Christians should look ahead. Verse 9, And I say unto you, Make to yourself friends of the manna, mammon, which means worldly wealth of unrighteousness that when you fail they may receive you into everlasting habitations Jesus is telling us that we should have friends that have wealth that are rich we should have friends know them not run with them don't misunderstand me it doesn't mean to run and hang around with them it's just have them as a friend and the reason he says because when they run out when they run out of money and everybody will run out of money. The Bible talks about that. One day, this uh, stock market is going to crash, and it's going to crash for good. There's not going to be no coming back. It's in the Bible. But when this happens, these people who know you because you were their friend are going to come to you. Not for financial help, for spiritual help. That's what the Lord is saying here. Amen? The Lord has great ways. <laughs> I mean, amen. I mean, that's... He's saying, be friends with them because one day they're going to need you. And then you can direct them to me. Amen? amen? Verse 10. He that, is, uh, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. And let me show you through the scriptures what this means. This is a parable and it has two meanings. So as we read these parables, remember there's two meanings here. There's, there's what it's talking about in the parable, but it also shows the Lord and us. There was a traveler and he had servants. That's what the parable was going to be on. And they, had, they handled his money while he was gone. We're going to see this also and look at it as we, the Lord is the one who, who left and the servants are us, the Christians. And he gave, in the parable, he gave the guys money, but in, Christ, in spiritually looking at this, he gave us gifts. So there's two ways, there's two meanings in this parable. And I'll try to keep it to where you can understand it. Matthews 25 verses 14 through 30. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. 
this man. We're going to see that this is the Lord. He left for a while and he called his own servants, which is Christians, to take care of his estate. In verse 15, And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several abilities, and straightway took his journey. He was trusting in, in these servants to take care of his estate, his money, just like he gave us Christians gifts. Now what are we going to do with these gifts? He gave, in the, in the parable, the worldly parable, he gave these men money to take care of. The spiritual way of looking at this is the Lord has given us gifts. Now what are we going to do with them? Verse 16. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Now this is the Christian that is, is for real. He is serving the Lord. Okay, And his desire is to do great before the Lord. We're going to see that. This is the one who liked what it says in Matthew 22, 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the way this Christian man was. He wanted to please the Lord. When you love the Lord this way, the only thing you do in life is want to please Him. When you do this, love Him with all your heart, soul, and mind. The gift the Lord gave him, he doubled it. He used all what the Lord has given him to do his ministry. Number 17. Verse 17. And likewise, he that received two, he also gained other two. Now, he did the same thing as the first one. Verse 18. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. This one didn't use what the Lord had left him. The money he had, and he just hid it. The money he took, he just hid it. He didn't try to double it like the other two. This Christian didn't obey the words of God, looking at it spiritually. Didn't use the power of the Lord that the Lord left him, the gifts. This one didn't, he just didn't obey the words of God. He didn't give the Lord love. He didn't give the Lord to love, which he gives us to give to others. He didn't witness to others because the Lord, that's what the Lord wants us to do, to witness to other people. He wants us to, what He's given us, He wants us to use and, and give back more. That's pretty much what He's saying. To bring more believers into heaven. But this third guy pretty much looked at his own self. He didn't look at it at the Lord's way. He looked at it His way. Well, this is what I'm going to do with it. Verse 19, After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. The servants didn't know how long the master would be gone, <clears throat> but they knew he was coming back. He knew his, they knew he was coming back. Matthew 24, 36, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So our Lord is coming back. Amen? Amen. The first two servants did the Lord's will as if he was coming tomorrow, like I said. But the third just kept doing the same thing like it was just another day. He didn't look forward to when the Lord was going to come back. Verse 20. And so he that received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done. Good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He told both the servants the same thing. Because of what they had done. They doubled what, what the Lord gave them. True born again Christians, true born again Christians, look forward to the Lord's coming. I hope, I hope y'all heard that. 
true born again Christians look forward to the Lord's coming. If you're looking forward to the Lord's coming, well, that means you're you're living to please Him, because you know He's coming. He said to be watchful. Verse Second uh, Timothy four eight. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous Judge, shall give me that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that loved His appearing. We're going to receive a crown. We have things to look forward to. Those who do His will, those who want to live for Him, will be happy and expect and wait for Him to come back. The Master was very pleased with these servants, just as the Lord will be when He comes back for us. Because the servants were entrusted with what the Master gave them, now He have a greater service for them throughout eternity. That's what he's saying. Now I'm going to give you more. The master tells him, let's celebrate together for your work you have done. The Lord tells us, come and enjoy the divine joy I have for you. Like I said, there's two teachings here. It's a parable meaning having two meanings. Spiritual and then the actual men receiving money. Us receiving gifts. The Lord. Revelation 21.4 and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crime, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Then which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, weeping where thou hast not sowed, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. First thing we see is that this servant gave excuses. Listen to me. He didn't do anything with what the Lord gave him. He had no fruits to show to the Lord. He charged his master with being unmerciful and dishonest. Okay, that's the earthly master. But as spiritually, we are going to there's going to be Christians who will have excuses why they didn't do God's will. They, it shows right here. They're gonna they're gonna have an excuse. Some Christians feel that the Lord is uncaring when He doesn't heal someone that you love who's sick, and the God doesn't heal them right away. Other Christians, family members, but God doesn't even care. That's what we say. Thanking Him to be unjust. The Christians who view God. Are the ones who don't know him. The ones who view him this way. Don't know him. I gave a teaching on. Does God still heal. And there's reasons why God doesn't heal. Sometimes. And if you want to know what they are. I have a teaching on. God does God still heal. Verse 25. And I was afraid. And went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo there thou hast that is thine. The only ones who would be afraid are the ones who are not walking with the Lord. They're the ones who are not joyfully waiting on the Lord. Those who are not doing God's will, they're the ones who were afraid for Him to come. You understand what I'm saying? He says, I have what you gave me, I just didn't use them. That's what this servant said. We as Christians are going to say, you gave me gifts, you gave me the power of the Holy Spirit, but I didn't use it. Verse 26. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I weep where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanger, and then at my coming I should have received my own with interest. His master called him wicked and lazy. He tells him, If you knew, I harvest crops and that I didn't plant and guide the crops I didn't cultivate, cultivate, then at least you should have put my money in the bank to draw interest. That's what he's saying. Now, this is not promoting us putting our money in the bank to draw interest. This is the earthly uh, boss. But that's what he told him. We are just as lazy and wicked as this, this man who did nothing with, with God's gifts. 
Don't show no hands, but how many of us show the power of God when we're out there in the world? The boldness of the Holy Spirit that's in us, and we're telling people about the Lord no matter who hears us, and we're not quiet about it. We'll go out there with boldness, and we're not ashamed. How many of us do that? Verse 28, Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable ser servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now this third servant was like Judas. He was there with, with the other two, a servant. But Judas, did Judas really love the Lord? No, he didn't. He walked with the Lord. He called him Lord. Judas called Jesus Lord. But he wasn't a true Christian. And the Lord will say unto them that do that. The Lord will say in Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. The first two did what? The will of the Father. They used the gifts. But the third one, he said unprofitable servant and he's going to be cast into outer darkness there shall be weeping gnashing of teeth that's hell so where's this third guy going hell. he's going to hell but he did but he did recognize his master but like like I said it says here Lord Lord uh, -uh that's not going to do it you recognize <clears throat> me but your heart wasn't there there are going to be people who will call Jesus Lord but the Lord says about them Matthew 7 23 and then I will profess unto them those who call Jesus Lord but not from the heart he says I will tell them I never knew you depart from me ye that worked iniquity you that lived in sins depart from me the bottom line is what it says in Matthew's chapter 6 verses 19 through 21 now this is out of the living Bible please listen to it Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth. He's speaking about retirement here. Lay, you meaning put aside. Don't put aside treasures upon earth. Where moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. In heaven. Lay up your treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor, nor rust no, do it corrupt, and where these do not break through nor steal. Listen, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Those verses say a lot right there, if you really understand them. This is the words of God. It's up to you if you want to believe this or not. It's up to you. I'm just giving you the scriptures. I'm giving you the word of the Lord. And he says it right there. If you don't, then you... If you're, if you're putting, laying up treasures, putting in for retirement, that's what it's talking about. Laying it up, putting it aside for retirement. Then you're depending <coughs> on yourself to take care of yourself in the future. That's what you're doing. If you don't lay up treasures for heaven, then you're losing blessings from God. That's what we're losing blessings from the Lord. And when you, do, uh, when you don't go by... The, the way God says to do it, lay up your treasures in heaven instead of here on earth. People who do that, that's why they end up with ulcers, gray hair, stress in life. They're not giving it to the Lord. They're depending on themselves to take care of themselves in the future. Now the world, the world, the Lord says, lay up your treasures for heaven. Now the world, they think this is stupid. Did I have retirement? Oh my gosh. I did that once in a Bible study at church. Somehow, somewhere we got on retirement. Somehow we got on money. And I told them, I said, I don't, I don't believe in retirement. And they all looked at me like I was crazy. I mean, they really did look at me like I was crazy. And I told them, I said, you know, it's okay. It's okay for y'all to look at me that way. Because Noah... When Noah started to build that boat, said he was going to build a boat, 
and there was no ocean, there was no water, how do you think they looked at him? And he was doing God's will. Amen? Amen. Do you want to be like the lost world? Or do you want to have faith in your God? How you take this verse will show you where your heart is. Read, that, read those verses again that I just read. Where your treasures are, that's where your heart will be. So your treasures, if it's money, now let's go back to Luke. That, all that right there was just to explain the verse in 10. Now we go back to Luke to verse 11. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? If you were unfaithful with the money the Lord gave you here on earth, meaning to use his money for his glory, for his glory, then how can he trust you with the true riches of heaven? You understand that, right? Mm -hmm. If he can't trust you with what he gave you now, how is he going to trust you later with the true riches of heaven? He says, if you can't even be trusted with your own money, meaning we will use it unwisely. Those, who, those of us who don't follow the directions of the Lord, the words of God, if we don't follow it this way, he said, you're going to use it unwisely. And who can trust you on that? Verse 13. Biggie. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon, wealth, riches. That's what that means. Now before I go on what that means here, I want to just put in something on the parents. Parents, and y'all hope to be one parents one day, listen to me. The Lord said you sh the two become one. Alright? You have a child, and one person says this, and the other one says that. Now the kid is like, well, whose side do you think he's going to take? Daddy said you can't. Mama says you can. He's going to choose Mama's side. That's what he's going to do. You can't have two masters. Father and mother, you have to be one. So when you tell the child something, it's one. He's not gonna, he, don't, he can't decide on whose side he's going to take. That's a mistake a lot of parents make. Remember, we're born into a sinful nature. And when our child gets older, they're going to have to decide if they want more fun from the world or if they're going to want to live for the Lord. Because if you show them when they were young they have choices, well, that's the way they're going to grow. And then they're going to see, okay, I have a choice. I can live for myself, do what I want to do, or I can live for the Lord. I have a choice. And because we're born into a sinful nature, most of the time we make the wrong choice. You give a child a lot of love and no discipline, listen to me. You give a child a lot of love and no discipline, that is not God's love. Don't think you're being Christian. That is not God's love. The love for us that the Lord has, He disciplines us. Hebrews 12.6, it says, For whom the Lord loveth, He chastiseth." us. means He disciplines us. Hope you understand what I'm saying there. Mm -hmm. You give a child all discipline and no love, then he's going to grow up to be rebellious. So we got to do it God's way. We love him, but we discipline him. No discipline, that's not from God. Because God said to discipline. This verse is saying that they are two masters. One of the masters is the Lord, which we put our trust in Him. And we're totally dependent on Him. We're totally dependent on the Lord. If that's the master we're going to trust. Totally dependent on Him. The other master is money. We depend to make it through life with money. Or we make it through life with the Lord. There's two choices here. You can't serve both. It plainly says it right here in verse 13. You cannot serve God and riches. Wealth. Money. You cannot, I repeat, you cannot serve the Lord and depend on money. 
That don't go together. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. You can't depend on the Lord, but rely on money to make it through whatever. Many people do that. Because like it says here, you will put them over the other and if your trust is in wealth, then what are you living for? If your trust is in that money, then what are you living for? The Lord or your money? My money is going to get me by on this and that and blah, blah, blah. Well, then who, you, who are you living for? The Lord or your money? Being dependent on money or anything that you're putting your trust in in life, listen to me, it's an act of worship. Because you, whatever you're depending on, that's what you're worshiping. You don't come out and say, I worship this, but that's what you're showing. Whatever you depend on, that's an act of worship on whatever it is. My act of worship is to the Lord. I depend on the Lord, so my worship goes to the Lord. I depend on the Lord for everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. If you're depending on your job to make it, then guess what? You worship your job. Wives, if you're depending on your husband, you worship your husband. Husbands, if you're dependent on your wife, you worship in your wife. We love together and we're one, but I don't seek my happiness from her. I seek it from the Lord and vice versa. She don't seek her happiness from me. She seeks it from the Lord. Because if we seek it from each other, we're going to disappoint each other. Because I will not always make her happy. And she will not always make me happy. But if we depend on the Lord to make us happy, amen? amen. He's not going to fail us. He will always be there. If you're a Christian and you're dependent on the Lord, well, that job, you pray, okay, Lord, I need a job. Pray, depend on the Lord to give you that job. Don't think it's you that's getting yourself that job. If you're praying to the Lord, Lord, I need a job, then it's the Lord that's going to give you that job. I remember one time we went on strike from Burton Shipyard. And I was a Christian, and I was like, went out looking for work. I couldn't find anything. And then the Lord, like, was, was he showed me, he said, uh, hello, have you came to me? Seriously, have you came to me? And I realized, you know, I haven't even prayed to the Lord about finding me a job. i just been going out there on my own. So I prayed, and I'm not, I'm, this, I'm serious. I prayed, said, okay, I need to pray to God. So I did, and I'm serious. That day, I found a job. Amen. The Lord works. Let me tell you, the Lord works. We just got to depend on Him. He got me the job. Husband, men, you want a Christian wife? Depend on the Lord to give you that Christian wife. Don't think, okay, I got these regulations. Uh, I need a woman that's this, 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 and this. You're depending on your regulations on a woman to get the right woman. Right. Guess what? You're going to fail. Vice versa on the wife also. Go to the Lord. Go to the Lord for whatever you need. Wife, job, husband, whatever. Whatever it is, go to the Lord. Twice I had to get, uh, put my trust in the Lord. Burden shipyard, like I said, when I went on strike and he got me the job. Then Coastal Spray. Coastal Spray, they wanted me to move to Dallas or to Austin because he wanted to expand. But both my parents were still here, and my daddy was, was real sick. And the Bible, for me reading the Bible, the Lord says, Hey, you take care of your parents. Nowhere in the Bible does, it, does he have the son taken off and leaving his parents behind. The Lord's way is you take care of your parents as long as they're alive. So I told my boss, I said, I can't go. And he says, well, you either do it or else. So then I had a decision to make. Do I do it God's way and stay here and take care of my parents and whatever happens, happens? Or do I do it the worldly way and say, oh, well, I'm depending on my job to make it. So I'm going to take that uh, transfer to Dallas or to Austin. Do you, do you hear me what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I depended on the Lord, got fired, but then got another job making a little bit more than what I was making over here. That's the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, I could have done the, the worldly, earthly thing and say, no, I need this job. I need to take it. I'll, I mean, my parents, uh, hope, hopefully someone else can take care of them. But men, 
they would, they would, most men would do that. Well, I can't get fired. I got to support my family. Well, who, who, who are they depending on? Themselves? Well, I got to keep this job because I got to take care of my family. But if it's, if God's saying, hey, I want you to do this, but you do this instead, who are you depending on? Yourself. I depended on the Lord. He fired me, got a better job. Believe in the Lord. Believe His words. I mean, I got it from the Bible that I needed to take care of my parents. The Bible says to honor your father and mother. It doesn't say to do it just to, until you turn 18 and then you go your way. That's not the way they did it in the Bible. Honor your father and mother. As long as they're alive, you honor them. And you stay under their authority until they go. If daddy says do this, you better do it. Because they're still ahead of you. Now, if he says to do something that's against God's will, that's different. Because if he's a Christian man and he's saying, you do this or do that, the book of Job is a good book to see that. So there's no age where you stop obeying your parents. And there's no age, that there's nowhere in the Bible that says, okay, you can take off, go where you want, live your own life now. That's, that's not from the Lord. I didn't have to get stressed out or... Or I didn't go into a depression both times when I lost both my jobs. One because, uh, well, they shut down the, the, the plant right after the strike. Got another job with the Coastal Spray. Then I lost a job with Coastal Spray because he wanted me to do something that was against God's will as far as I'm concerned. Got me a better job. Amen? Amen. I didn't need to go and stressed out. and I left it to the Lord. The Lord has taught me how to leave it to Him. How to depend on Him. This has a lot to do on what are you depending on? The Lord or yourself or your job, your money. Because there's choices you have to make. When we're, when we're sick, we're supposed to go to the Lord first. We go to Him first. Before we go to the doctor, we go to Him first. Ask for a divine healing. The heal is right there on the spot. That's what we ask for. And if He doesn't, Okay, now go to the doctor because maybe he'll use the doctor to heal you. And if the doctor puts you on medicine, he uses medicine to heal you. But let me tell you this. Listen to me. Doctors or medicines cannot heal you. Only God. If he uses them, great. But God doesn't need that to heal you. So don't put your trust in a doctor or medicine. Oh, I'm good. I'm, I'm healed because of this. No. God healed you. He might have used medicine. He might have used a doctor. But God did it. Don't give the doctor or medicine the credit. Give all glory to the Lord. Do y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Are you depending on retirement to make it when you retire? If you are, then who are you putting your trust in? Psalms 20 verse 7. Some trust in chariots. Some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Back, back in this time, when this was written, when the nations went to battle, if they had horses and, and chariots to go into battle with, that, that gave them a great advantage over the enemy. And that's what they trusted in to win the battles. Right here it says, Trust in chariots and summon horses, but we, but who's the we? Christians. We will remember the name of the Lord. That's what's going to get us through our battle. Amen? That's what he's saying right there. Right here. It seems to be easier for us to rely on our own ability. It's, it, listen. It seems to be easier for us to rely on our own ability. And a lot of people do that. We're scared to give it to the Lord. We're scared to depend on the Lord to take care of whatever the, whatever the problem is. We seem to forget who our God is. Or we just don't believe His words. It's one of those two. These verses show you without a doubt depend on the Lord for everything. Everything. As soon as you start taking credit for what you have or whatever you're doing, as soon as you take the credit, believe me, God is out of the picture. He will take Himself out. Oh, you want the credit? Okay. You're on your own. That's why I say who I am today, it's all the Lord. Because I know Jesse. I give him all the praise for who I am today. 
Matthew 13, 22. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word <clears throat> and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. The word, the world system is to worry. That's their way. You know, you need to worry about everything. Pretty much that's what we do today. Like I said, we worry about money. Do I have enough? Am I making enough? Can I do this? Can I get that? The Lord is saying, take it one day at a time. We don't do that. We don't take it one day at a time. Matthew 6, verse 34, it says, Take therefore no thought for the moral. Oh, that's so big. But that is a command from God. How many of us know that that's a command from God? Therefore... Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things in itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. The words of God chokes us because we can't accept them. That's what it's saying right here. It chokes us. That's what it's saying right here. Choke the word. People can't accept these words. People can't accept don't worry about tomorrow. So the word chokes them. Because God said not to worry. But we're still acting in the flesh. And we worry. It chokes the word right out of. These verses are going to choke the word right out of some of y'all. Whoever's listening to this, this teaching. Some of y'all are going to be choked by the word. Because you're going to go. I cannot take that. I cannot do that. You're right. You cannot. But God can. God can. He takes care of the moral. We need to believe that. Having money can be a curse to you if you don't watch it. Matthew 19 verses 21 through 26. A man asked Jesus what he had to do to be saved. And he tells him in verse 21, Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, meaning complete, not perfect without sin. Only Jesus was perfect without sin. What he's saying here, if thou wilt be perfect, meaning you take him, Go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. A rich man, someone who is wealthy. It's hard for them to make it into heaven. Verse 24, And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Now, eye of a needle, that's not talking about sewing. The gate wall around the city, the wall, they had little arches, little arches where, where men could barely fit through. And right now, right here is saying, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, which is just about impossible, but he said it's easier for a, a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to make it into the kingdom of God. That's pretty. That's putting it pretty blunt. It would be easier for this two ton camel. To go through that little hole right there. Than for a rich man to make it to heaven. Y'all hear me? Not hear me. Do you hear the words of God? This is the words of the Lord. When his disciples heard it. They were exceedingly amazed saying. Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Amen. If you're trying to make it to heaven on your own by following the Ten Commandments, guess what? You're going to fail. We need the Lord's love to be able to give. You don't have the Lord's love. It's hard to give. Without the Lord's love, we have a lot of selfishness. We want to keep. We don't want to give. We want to keep. Luke chapter 12 Verses 16 through 21. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought with himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. He had so much fruit, he didn't know where to put it. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns. He's going to tear down his old barns and build bigger barns. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. This man was very rich. And I will say to my soul, So thou hast much goods laid up 
for me for many years. He didn't give it away because he wanted to save it for himself for his future. Taking care of himself. Do y'all, do y'all see it here? Mm-hmm. Take thy ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. Hey, hey. Just, hey, you got plenty? Yeah. Party, man. Have fun. That's what it's saying. Verse 20. But God said unto him, this is what God said, Thou fool. He's calling this rich man a fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be? Then, you know, after I take you, where's all these fruits, all this wealth you have? Where's that going to go? Which thou hast provided. You're going to leave it to your kids? Let me tell you what. Rich people, when they leave money to their kids, guess what? It's gone within a year probably. It's gone. So you didn't do him any favors. So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. The Lord has shown here, use what he gives us now. That's what he's shown. Use what he gives us now and don't save it to take care of yourself in your retirement. That's what he's saying. Ephesians 4.28 Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, let him work, working with the hands, the things which is good, that he may have to give. What are we supposed to get do with our money? We work, we get our money, we take care of the things we need, but right here it says, and that he may have to give to him that is in need. Meditate on that. God's way is give. Remember the story is about a rich man and a poor man. They both died. The poor, the, the poor man went to paradise. The rich man went to prison. We're talking about Lazarus. Lazarus was, was the poor man. And the, and the rich man, he went to prison. To Sheol. Let's see who came out on top. Lazarus was a poor, was a poor Christian man. Listen to me. Lazarus was a poor Christian man. The rich man had wealth. Ephesians, no, Luke 16, 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth the good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. It wasn't evil things he's talking about. He was just poor. But now he is comforted, and thou art in torment. Did y'all hear that? Lazarus was a poor man, but now he's being comforted by the Lord. Amen. The rich man had everything he wanted while he was on earth living, but now because he didn't do it the Lord's way, now he's being tormented. Amen. Do y'all see this? Amen. This is why we need to depend on the Lord for everything. Everything depend on the Lord. First Timothy chapter six. I'm gonna read verses. 2 through 10 and then 17 through 19. This is going to talk this is going to be talking about false teachings and true riches. This is what it's going to talk about. These teach these things, Timothy, and encourage everyone to obey them. Some people may contradict our teaching, but these are the wholesome teachers of the Lord Jesus Christ. These teachings promote a godly a godly life. Anyone who teaches Something different is ignorant and lacked understanding. Such a person has an unhealthy desire to quibble over the means of words. This stirs up arguments, ending in jealousy, division, slander, and evil suspicions. These people always cause trouble. Their minds are corrupt and they have turned their back on the truth. To them, a show of Godliness is just a way to become wealthy. A show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy. In the King James Bible, it says to stay away from them. It doesn't say it here, but if you read the King James Version, it says stay away from these people that he just that he just, just, just described. He says stay away from them. Verse 6. Yet true godliness with contentment is in itself great wealth. The Lord says being a true Christian is being content with what he gives us. Amen? Amen. This is what's being rich. Being content with what the Lord has given us. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into this world. 
And we can't take anything with us when we leave it. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. But people who long to be rich fall into temptations and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that, that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Did y'all hear that? Did, I mean, read this at home by yourselves. Read these verses by yourselves. It doesn't say money is evil. But it leads to evil. I've showed that money is good when you use it in for God's glory. Money is good. Helping people, taking care of people in needs. Verse 17. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud. Now listen. Teach those who are rich, those who do have in this world not to be proud, not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Did y'all hear that? Money. People who live for money, who depend on money, the Lord is saying it is so unreliable. So you want to put your trust, your faith in the money that you make? Or do you want to put it in God? Because right here he says, money is un unreliable. Their trust should be in God. Who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Let me say that just one more time. Verse, the last part of verse 17. Their trust should be in God. Their trust should be in God. Who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Ain't this the God we want to depend on? Wouldn't we rather depend on this God than our own self? Listen to me. Everyone in here, everyone in here is rich. We are. Look at the people in India, in India who hardly have water to drink. And in other places, they don't have nothing. They have dirt as floor. Barely have a roof over their head. Compare yourself with them. Are you rich? We're all rich in here. The Lord's talking to us right here in these verses. So this goes for us. This verse is for us. So y'all read it again. Because it's for us. Verse 18. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works. And generous to those in need. Always being ready to share with others. By doing this they will be storing up their treasures. As a good foundation for the future. So that they may experience true life. What's true life? Giving. Giving. Well, Jesse, I, don't, I mean, I really don't have that much money. You're thanking the worldly way. God is your Father. He owns everything. Right? Mm -hmm. He owns everything. Give. That's the Lord's way. James 5.3 Your gold and silver have become worthless. Your money, your gold and silver has become worthless. The very wealth you were counting on will eat away your flesh like fire. That retirement you was what you was depending on, guess what? It, be, it can be gone in a second. This treasure you have accumulated will stand as evidence against you on the day of judgment. Just like the rich man, we have to stand before the Lord and pay for our disobedience. Just like the rich man, he ended up in torment for not obeying God. Same way here. For disobedient. For not believing the words of God. That we've studied tonight. These scriptures that we've studied tonight. Showing. Do not. Do not. Do not. Especially depend on money. I can't say what the percentage is. But I can guarantee you that it's very high. More Christians depend on money. Than the Lord. I hear it and I see it. Let's don't fall into that. We end up like the rich man. Worship money. Go ahead and see what happens. 1 Samuel. Verse 2. No, chapter 2, verse 7. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth the low and lifteth and lift it up. Believe it or not, 
But it says that sometimes the Lord's will is for someone to be poor. Right here, the Lord maketh poor. The Lord makes you poor. And you're like, well, why would the Lord want me to be poor? I'll tell you why. Because he knows you. He knows you better than you know you. He let you, if he blesses you with more money, guess what? There's some people, a lot of people, they went, they're going to go buy that boat and go fishing on Sunday. They're going to get that cabin at the beach or at, uh, at the lakes and that's where they're going to be on Sunday so there's some people the Lord says no it's better you stay poor because if I let you have riches if I let you have money you're going to get away from me y'all hear me mm -hmm. now he knows now he makes some rich some people he blesses with wealth but those are the people who keep their eyes on the Lord and to give all glory and credit to him right. you know yeah I have all this but all this was given to me by the Lord but when we start saying, oh, this, all this is mine because of my good job. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Now, people will say, hey, I don't worship money. People will say that. But what's the difference between that and people who are drug addicts who say, oh, I'm not an addict. Mm -hmm. Or people who say, oh, I'm not an alcoholic. And everybody knows they are. What's the difference? What's the difference? There is no difference. Oh, I'm, oh, I don't worship money. Yes, you do. There's people, a lot of people who worship money. And in and, and, and this teaching, if that's what it has shown you, that you're a worshiper of money, praise God. Praise God. All we have to do is say, Lord, forgive me. Amen. That's all we need to do. Lord, forgive me from the heart. And the Lord will forgive us. That's all we need to do. He's saying, hey, I've showed you all this. Now, now, do you believe me? Or do you still want to trust in yourself? 